So I've mapped out this um, third column and then I'm just gonna move my paper over, slide it over. And then you can focus on the one, two, three, fourth over, one down. So yeah, this technique can pretty much be used for anything. Like if, um, if you guys have something at home, like you see something in a magazine or from a book and, and you, you print an image of it, you can put the, the grid guidelines on um, and then you can start your grid on your separate paper and then you'll be able to transfer it, basically translate what you see here um, in its like grid map form and then map it out on your other paper. But the thing that you do have to keep in mind is um, if you want it to be uh, to match in size, it does have to be the same size paper. So obviously you guys don't have like a huge, huge paper like she does. Um, but you know, the, this is basically the same process that she would use in creating her work uh, minus the, the photography. So it's a little hard to see with the contrast. Let me try to darken this. So this line to the left is for the grid. And then I, I darkened the outline with a Sharpie. So there's just a little bit of negative space between the um, outline for your square and the beginning of this. Um, it's like a cement pedestal that the shoes are placed on. So um, as we're working together, you guys will learn there's so many different ways of um, approaching a piece. Like this is a very analytic kind of process where you're, you're observing on one side and then you're translating it to the other versus working a little bit more freely. You'll have, um, you know, less of that like logic in in the process but it will have a little bit more of like your your freedom and your own like artistic expression so yeah this is just like one way of working and as we're working together we're going to be going over many different types of um like mindsets approaches and processes for your work um and the thing to remember is you're not gonna like everything like you know some people this will drive them crazy because it's super slow it's very detail oriented really meticulous but some people love this challenge and they 
um, you know, they appreciate the way that it's organized and laid out for them. So um, even if you don't like what we're doing in here, just, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, just, you know, practice what you can. And that way you have a good repertoire of all these different types of styles and techniques. And you can take what you like after class and leave the stuff you don't. Okay, so that's it for this fourth column. And then we're just going to scoot over to the next one. Um, so feel free to let me know if you guys want me to speed up. Um, and there you go. Oh, I just saw your message, Malik. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. So, what do you mean by um, spending each spending time on each section? Like, oh, do you have the picture of what we're looking at? So you're kind of like imagining the light coming in from a different direction. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I mean, that that's definitely like a cool exercise. Um, I think for now, just so that we can get through this first part, and I don't want you to fall behind, um, just focus on like the, the line work. So this is called contour. For those of you guys that are wondering, that's um, a technical art term that means like the outline of an object um, the stuff inside wouldn't technically be contour but we're just focusing on the line and then afterwards we're gonna go into some of the um, pointillism and the like stippling technique so yeah I love that you're already imagining it Malik but let's just focus on um, the line work for now And when you get to um, the more geometric, like straight lines, you can you can decide to freehand them, or if you want, you can even use your ruler to really define those edges to get them nice and crisp. So it's really up to you what you want to do. So I always start with a sketch, and then when I want to um, define it, I'll press a little bit harder, use a little bit more pressure, and then you can clean up any of the areas around that, the lines that you don't want to keep. So I'm going to move over to the next column.
Yeah, so basically this is just like taking us back to, um, you know, Monart's like elements of shape and really focusing on like planning dots to connect. So, you know, trying to map out the direction that you're going. Um, when I'm looking at the negative space, like for example, I see this like triangle right here. See, so I actually want to look at this shape instead of just the line so that I can try to match it as closely as I can. So that's using um, the negative space to help you map out your piece. And I think another thing that's really cool about this artist is um, just the fact that she's really transparent in how much time she spends on a piece of work. I think a lot of times nowadays we're, we're always rushing through things, you know, our society is so fast paced that it oftentimes we, we always just want to get to the end. But I think the one of the coolest things about art and like one of its biggest values um, for us is its ability to slow down. So, you know, I think that not only as um, an artist, the process of slowing down with your work and really spending time with it is valuable, but also as viewers, you know, being able to go into a gallery or museum or see something that takes your breath away and forces you to slow down, I think is really incredible um, nowadays. So just some food for thought. How are you guys doing? Are you ready for the next the next column? Need a little bit more time. You ready, Lily? Okay, cool. I'll just scoot it over. So we have this column and then I think just like a couple more and then we can get on to the shading. So here for this one, for example, you know, this is pretty much like almost exactly in the middle of this square. So when I get to the point where, you know, these two lines meet perpendicularly, um, you're going to like go over and make a little mark and that's going to be where the um, side of that cube starts. So just like taking your time and really um, thinking about how, how the lines are uh, meeting at different points and um, this is also like another thing that you can do even without the grid just looking at where places meet so you know this is pretty much lined up with the edge of this circle so just like making these invisible lines so that you can you can map it out try to achieve as much likeness as you can Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, I guess it's like one more and just a little bit, so I'll just remove this.
Alright, cool. So, basically when you are done mapping it out, um, the next step would be to clean up any edges, like really look closely and see if there's any areas that are a little bit off. Okay, so what we can do now is if you guys want to um, want to hold up your work, then, then I can take a look. We can do a little like mini critique really quick. Um, and this time is always just like as constructive criticism. It's just for me to help you. Um, usually in the studio, you know, I'd be able to like circle around and see your work. So no need to, you know, shy away from this. So who wants to start? Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Let's do uh, Lily and then we'll take Malik and then we'll do Spirit. Okay. So yeah, you can just go ahead and hold up your, um, your image. And then let me make it a little bit bigger. This is also good for all of us to, you know, pay attention. Okay, cool. Nice. So one thing I noticed, let's see. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, great job with that. It does look a little bit um, smushed on the right side, the, like near the toe. So do you see that? Here, let me switch back my, my video so you can see. Um, Yeah, I mean, even looking at mine, like mine can come down a little bit. See that? So just making those slight ad adjustments, mine comes up a little bit sharp versus it's a little bit more, you know, curved here. So just looking closely at C, um, looking at the negative space too. But yeah, good, good job so far. All right, let's see. Um, let's take a look at yours, Malik. Do you want to hold yours up? Well, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Let's see. Right. Like this. Oh, nice. Wow, great. So you were adding a lot of detail there. Okay, awesome. Can you try to move it, uh, let's see, a little down? I'm getting a harsh glare. It's a little hard to see the... Okay, yeah. It looks pretty close from what I can see. I think that the toe is a little short though because I think that it goes into the next square if I'm if I'm not mistaken but yeah it looks pretty good from what I can see cool spirit um, let's take a look at yours too okay nice okay one thing I noticed um, it's really, and this is just be, me being nitpicky just so that I can help you guys. Um, the face of your cube on the right looks a little bit small. Do you see that? So like, let me, let me go back to my picture here, my video. Just right here, it looks like yours is in maybe like in the, the square over to the left. It just needs to be pulled out a little bit more. But I think that's it for it for yours. Yeah. Cool. All right. Meg, I think you're good, right? <laughs> I mean, I can give you a critique if you want. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, actually, guys, Meg is joining us. She, um, you were in Spain, right? Doing, um, doing, you were abroad doing art there for your, was yeah. it like for your bachelor's? It was, I, so I graduated last year, but I was there as an English and an art teacher. That's really cool, yeah. So you guys, it's always cool to see, you know, um, Meg and I have tons of like experience, lots of years of training, but it's like, even now it's good for us. She actually wanted to join in just to, you know, get back to basics. So always circling back around, it's always helpful for, you know, um, refining your skill, right? All right, so um, the next step, now that we're done with that, um, I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit of our pointillism technique. So raise your hand if you've ever heard of pointillism, also known as stippling. Okay, Lily, okay, cool. So, yeah, Meg. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, I did a little bit of a demo here. So basically what you're doing in pointillism is you're using your um, pen or your paint, whatever you're using, whatever material, you're doing a repetitive motion of little dots. 
You can also, um, so that's specifically pointillism or stippling, but you can also do the same kind of um, process using different types of mark making. So raise your hand if you've ever heard of cross hatching or hatching. Okay, yeah. So um, if I were to use my pen, so just switching over to my pen now, um, I can just show you guys this and then you can all be able to pull up the picture for photo reference and then you guys will be able to look back and forth. So, sorry, actually, before we do the pen, the first thing would be to get rid of your, um, your grid. So, just because the camera quality isn't super great, I wanted you guys to be able to see the outline. I did outline it in Sharpie, um, but for you guys, I would recommend doing it in, in pen. So, actually, the next step would be, if you guys want to take some time to do that, would be just to define the lines and this is where you know certain lines maybe you didn't want to keep like for this circle here I have a little line coming off but I just want to do one um, complete circle and then basically after you've outlined it with your ballpoint pen then we can clean it up by erasing it so yeah let's do about like I think you guys can do this in about five minutes so just outline everything that you want to keep and uh, also another trick I'm sure you guys have done before just rotating your paper helps too that way you don't kink your wrist like we got to take care of our wrist right um, so just keep rotating your paper so that it's easier to you know reach certain areas and we'll take this time you can just outline any lines that you want to stay And one other thing is like sometimes when I'm using pen like you'll your pen will kind of uh, It just like won't work. So just like keep a little scrap paper to the side and then you can do a little doodle And then that'll get the ink going again um, Another thing that sometimes I do is like I'll lick my finger and then I'll just like wet it a little bit um, But yeah, that's just like a little trick So I guess I could use this time since you guys are um, outlining, I can just go over our syllabus, kind of take a look at what we're going to be focusing on um, for the month. So let me pull that up.
Okay, cool. So, um, you guys can just, you know, listen as you're working. Um, but yeah, today we were looking at hyperrealism with our hyperreal chucks um, and really um, learning different techniques on how to achieve that realism. And then next week we're going to be looking at MC Escher. He's so cool. Like, really trippy artist. Um, yeah, you guys will be amazed if you haven't already learned about him. But um, we're going to be looking at his relativity lattice, which is actually the inspiration for if any of you are like into Harry Potter or whatever. Um, that's basically where J.K. Rowling got that idea for the plat the platforms, like the, the staircases that lead to different um, dimensions and different like different platforms so yeah that'll be really cool and we're going to continue with ballpoint pen um, and then the following week we're going to dive into color so really focusing on um, on our color wheel and this specific color wheel there's many different like color theorists but this one is by Johannes Itten and so um, it's cool it's a star and so I'm going to email this PDF to you guys so that you can print it beforehand that way we'll just be able to fill it out and we're gonna really like get into the nitty-gritty of color mixing and color theory and then we'll use the following week we'll use what we learned with um, color theory for this portrait and so this is another artist um, contemporary artist her name is Marilyn Minter and she creates these really beautiful uh, they're oil paintings but um, they're really beautiful paintings of um, usually women, like tons of different colors and everything. So we're going to be using our, our color star to uh, translate that into a color portrait. So yeah, it should be a cool month. Um, I'm really excited to teach this stuff with you. Uh, this is all kind of stuff that I geek out over. So yeah. How are you guys doing? Do you need a little bit more time for that? Are you ready? Okay, cool. So. Um, once you have, you know, outlined everything, then you can clean it up by just erasing it. So just get rid of the grid and also it's going to pick up any of those extra lines just to like make a clean surface. And I know I went over this with some of you before, if you've been in class before, there are different types of erasers if I'm going into, you know, like the, um, tools and stuff so there's gum erasers which sometimes they're like pink this one's white um, they're usually like rectangular these are really good for like getting rid of like big surfaces because you can use the flat side um, but there's also another type of eraser called a kneaded eraser so they're, they're gray like this um, and you the cool thing about these is you can actually um, kind of uh, they're malleable so you can change the shape of them like if I wanted to just remove a little tiny part and like create this pointed edge then I could pick it up that way so um, yeah I think both are useful for different reasons but for today I mean this one this one does just fine so yeah just clean up all of your grid and then we're gonna go into our different stippling techniques so I kind of started this just to show you guys a little example. So um, pointillism is specifically, I'll use my Sharpie so it's bigger. Pointillism. This is specifically doing dots. It's just dots over and over again. So like holding your pen up to the ceiling and just doing a bunch of dots. <laughs> no, this is, um, I think like love-hate relationship with this because I think it's really cool when you realize like all of the detail that went into this. This might drive someone crazy, but it could also be like a source of meditation. If you guys get like, in a trance and you just kind of zone out and you're just doing these dots over and over again. So as you can see, you know, when I space them out with more white space in between versus when I layer them on top of each other a lot,
you can get different values. So like this would be a lighter value, like this would be a good um, thing to use if I were doing, you know, those like silver, uh, silver circles that are holding the shoelaces together versus like this would be really good for a really dark area. So that's what it looks like really up close, zoomed in. So that's specifically pointillism. Another word for it is called stippling. Um, CJ also uses, she, she says it's like a scribbling technique. So you can use the same idea, but with scribbles. So you could, you know, do some, like maybe my uh, shape or my texture is like an oval and I'm going to just space them out or I could just get in this repetitive motion where I'm just like layering them on top of each other. And again, the same idea, like the more, um, the more line work you have layered, it's going to create a darker value, okay? So yeah, that's pretty much it for, um, for our technique. And I'm gonna switch over to the picture so you guys can really look at it closely. And then if you have any questions, you can just let me know. Oh, the one thing is, the one other one I wanted to go over was hatching. So some of you said that you've learned this before, but this is going to be, hatching is diagonal or straight lines. And then cross hatching is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to cross them. So that's another way to create texture. And when you look really close, that really builds up a lot of value there. Make sense? Cool, cool. Okay, awesome. So let me switch over to the picture to our um, photo reference. And yeah, just feel free, like if you guys have any questions, if you have any comments or anything, just feel free to like turn your sound on or you can put it in the chat. Let's see. So yeah, this is directly from her Instagram. If you guys like are super into her work, um, let's see, that's her, that's her Instagram handle, CJ underscore Hendry. You could check her out. Um, but yeah, what I really want you guys to be looking at is the values. So you know, these areas, the super dark areas, that's just tons and tons of um, scribbling or stippling layered on top of each other, versus like you know this little silver thing here has almost no um, texture in it.
Oh, good question. So Spirit just asked, do you do a mixture of the dots and other stuff or just one? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm mixing it up. Um, so she actually, let me see if I could find like a, a zoomed in picture of, of hers. She does these like scribbles where they're kind of just, yeah, you're just kind of scribbling back and forth. She, she kind of like doesn't even lift her, her pen at some points, but she also does a mixture of pure pointillism. So just like dots up and down. So try out both and see which one you like. Um, I've been kind of mixing them up and, um, yeah, like when I zoom in, let me see, we can get really close. There you go. So yeah, certain areas look like really a lot of like the pointillism, like this area right here. But then I'd say like, you know, these darker areas, it's hard to even tell. So yeah, I, I'll leave that up to you guys. What, what you think? And I'll, I'll keep this zoomed in for you. So yeah, we'll do like, um, let's do like 15 more minutes and then that'll give us some time to take a look at each other's work. And then, you know, if you guys have any questions or anything, then, then yeah, I can answer them too. Uh, while we're working, I mean, I'd love to hear, um, I know I asked, I already asked Spirit, like, what, what kinds of things he's interested in, but yeah, I'd love to hear, like, the different themes or, um, certain, like, materials you guys are interested in. We have, like, a smaller class now, so, um, I could even try to work some of that stuff into, um, our lessons, so, yeah, does anyone have any, um, any comments or anything? And you know, as a teacher, like knowing what what your guys' goals are or the focus that you, um, the, the stuff you wanna focus on, it's also helpful for me, just so I can maybe even introduce like certain artists that I think you'd be into or different types of techniques too. So Lily, I know that you were super into like animals, right? Because I know that's something that we, we did a lot of um, in our last class. Was there anything else that you wanted to explore in, in our advanced drawing class? Yeah, go ahead.